Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to another episode of Kadaboshi. Excited to be here as always. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Last episode was last episode. Uh, Tomoe bat story with Madoka and how, you know, the moment she learned Madoka was marrying the chief and some childhood stuff from them. Um, we did what? And that was it. That Then the realization that the... Hatakiyama's daughters, the one who killed everyone, not the father. And now we're investigating the Psyche Hospital, because apparently there's something sussy going on with the pills that might actually, might some some organization, aka Tokyo, might actually be uh, pushing the pills onto uh, Hinomi's islands and actually trying to make them go L4, so. Would be kind of crazy, but let's see how this goes. While writing a report on the nurse burning ant incident, Tamoe thought about her earlier conversation with Fujita. Even though she had grown accustomed to seeing him feeling down and indignant at irrationality, it was particularly painful this time. I mean, it's pretty crazy that a 10 year old killed her whole family with a gun. Do they even have a gun? I thought guns were in, uh, in Japan, like you can't own one. But I guess like maybe in the countryside, like a hunting rifle is probably fine, I don't know. He tried to make a rebuttal, but nothing came out. Across the country, there are several incidents involving hunting rifles every year. Among them, the worst cases were the ones where children mistakenly pulled the trigger as a prank, only to end up killing someone. Thus, it seemed unwise to call the theory absurd and brush it aside. Indeed, Tamoe had her testimony from neighboring housewives that always Father Maso Hatakiyama had gone on several hunting trips with her. Okay. It's proof. Some good evidence. If she had told him she was interested in learning, he probably would have let her try it out, so she may have been familiar with the operation. The argument that it was impossible for a child was easily refuted that way. Ooh, does she have bruises? After simulating the posture against the conference room wall, she picked up one of the pictures of the closet door she had taken herself. On the opposite side of the door was a wall covered in blood splatter from when Yoshito was shot. And to support her argument, she found a mark left behind by something heavy, about one meter on the ground on the closet door. Yeah, okay. It's from the recoil. Oh, okay. Whoa. I mean, it's technically the truth. She did get knocked out and hit her head. Just not why she got knocked out. だから吹き飛ばされて頭を打ち付けて失神した。それについては現場の証拠だけでは判断できないと鑑識は言っておりました。Fujita tried several times to calm himself by breathing steadily, but eventually he cried out while clenching his fist. <laughs> 
Tomoe remained silent, thinking back on when she met Aoi before in the park. A few of her friends had said terrible things about her, to her about Hinomizawa, and it pushed her over the edge. They say that group bullying is the cruelest and most merciless from late elementary school to middle school. Since students can't understand restraint at that age, they can come to peer pressure and take things too far. So if Tomoe hadn't stepped in to help her that one time, it may have been even worse. Her sorrow transformed into resentment. Her anger festered into hatred, so it actually seemed a natural reaction for Ari to lash it out against her family, the source of her problems. ちょっと、ダイアムシンドロム。しかも、その内容が適すぎている。Someone Tamoe called out to Fujita as he tried to dash out, and after failing to find the right word, she held up one hand in an apology. As Tomoe finished writing the report, she threw down her pen, leaned back into her chair, and looked upward. She noticed the fluorescent lamps on the ceiling. One was poorly illuminated, probably broken. Fujita thought it was impossible for a girl Aoi's age to commit such violence, but Tomoe was thinking about it the other way around. Made it in the brains. Murder is generally avoided because people see it as an inhumane act, but paradoxically, murder exists precisely because of humane thoughts. Outside of self-defense and hunting, a certain type of self-awareness is required to transition from murderous intent to et into execution. Since some people still haven't fully mentally developed and have a lot of other outside influences, they can't find any meaning in killing others. Someone's existence is threatened, and that drives them to kill. Some crisis overtakes their life, and that drives them to kill. Both require the ability to recognize the relative or absolute value of life and existence after one's sense of self has been established. And that concept is not properly rooted during early childhood. It developed through interactions with other people during adolescence, nourishing a concept of empathy for other people. So for young people who are essentially children, aside from unfortunate accidents, they lack the very concepts required to conceive the notion of killing another person. They don't understand the benefits of murder. <laughs> Then who did it she learn it from? Han Yu? Stop teaching kids to murder? Who would give a 10 year old girl the insight necessary to commit such a horrible crime? 
Tomoe shook her head and opened her eyes to escape the maze, that maze of thought. Even she felt she might be looking too deeply into this. However, she was certain there was some common element linking the strange behavior and crimes committed by the people of Hin from Hinamizawa. And if they couldn't figure it out, these tragedies would only continue. Just then... Madoka? Yep. What's up? The door to the room opened and her sister Madoka came in. Tomoe had actually stayed overnight at Takuchi Station, but she thought it would be too troublesome to mention that, so she didn't bother to correct her sister. Uh oh. Forgot something important? Can't blame me for not remembering. I don't think it's ever been mentioned to the reader, okay? <laughs> After seeing Madoka cross her arms and puff out her cheeks, Tomoe flipped open her notebook and checked the schedule. Right. Today was the day that Chief Yamoka's parents were coming to town to meet their future daughter-in-law, Madoka. That's gonna be so weird, dude. How old are they gonna be? Like, at least 70? 70 or 80? <laughs> Dinner with the... The stepbrothers... Is it stepbrother? Yeah, I guess it would be... Is that... What do you... Call your sister's husband. Brother-in-law. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Brother-in-law, not stepbrother. Steps only if it's, what, from a child of your new... Uh, the person who married your biological parent, <laughs> I think. Alright, yeah, me, the parents of your brother-in-law. What the heck? Though Tomoe still held a grudge against the chief, that didn't mean she hated his parents. Don't even know who they are, man. In fact, even though they were getting up there in years, they still they came all the way from Yamaguchi to meet their son's fiance, Madoka. Tomoe wasn't heartless enough to deny an elderly couple their happiness. In fact, when Madoka told her about it a couple days, she responded, Isn't that nice? Tomoe thought back to her earlier conversation with Oishi and let out an exasperated sigh. <laughs> good job. Actual good one. You honestly deserve that. Yeah, I thought she was BMing, but she really didn't know that's what Madoka was trying to convey. <laughs> Until just then, she hadn't even thought about it at all. Thinking back on it, at the time when Tomoe responded, Isn't that nice to Madoka? She seemed strangely happy about it. Come on. It'll be funny. I wanna watch that. <laughs> You'll be the would you be a daughter in law too? Does that or I'm so So if you're a parent of 
and your son's marrying a daughter, a girl. Then she becomes your daughter-in-law. Would the other daughter also be your daughter-in-law, even though you do not? Okay. Would your son's wife be your daughter-in-law? The wife of your son, you are her mother-in-law or father-in-law. But what about your your wife's daughter? Your wife's uh, your 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 son's wife's sister. Cause there's, uh, oh my god, my child's spouse's parents. My daughter, the the wife, son, daughter, mother, father, son, law, step. Blah, 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 blah. I can't do it. I don't know. It's too confusing. If you know, you know. I don't know. <laughs> Tomoya clearly misread the situation, and even thought it was only an accident, but Oka made a compelling argument against it. However, what do you mean? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, owned. She seriously didn't want that old man calling her sister, her his sister-in-law. After Tomoe's ultimatum, she stood up with her report in hand. Normally, Madoka would get shot and angry with her sister during an argument and storm away. But today, she wouldn't let it end there. Standard round. <laughs> Madoka grabbed Tomoe's arms with both her hands to stop her. And Madoka gazed at her on the verge of tears. Oh shit. <laughs> you know you wanna. それを それにこの結婚、私だって真剣なんだよ。昔みたいにいい加減で適当に思いついたんじゃない。だからお願い。結婚のことはまだ認めてもらえなくても、私お姉ちゃんが信じてくれるようになるまで頑張るから。でも協力
今なんて Suddenly, unable to understand what she meant, Madoka tightened her grasp on Tomoe's arm. It was so sudden she couldn't believe it. Even though she tried persuading her 19 times in the past, it never amounted to anything. That's why she never expected her sister to acquire. A quiz, a quiz, a quiz, a quiz, a... That's a doodle. I'm sorry. A-C-Q-U-I-E-S-E. -E. Oops, I pressed... What even is that? Microsoft Office 365. I don't even own that. A -C -T a quiz. Acquiesce. Acquiesce! Oh, I know that word. I love using... I love saying that word. Acquiescence. But, um, did I not spell it? Okay, ac she never expected her assistance to acquiesce today. Tomoe shrugged her shoulders while smiling at her sister. It's me, sister of the year. New song just dropped? Like the bells? ただし、絶対条件が一つ。アンニャローが私のことをね、心配ないこと。これだけは絶対譲らないからね。分かった。ほ、本当に。それけし、ふたらよ。いたら許さないよ。後で4月バサとかごまかしたりしないよね。<la
I remember like I, I hear people that like just uh just like one side done first and then the other side done like a couple weeks later. I, I just went for both sides and they were just fucking that shit up. It honestly it wasn't even the pain since they they put you on like laughing gas or whatever, but just the sounds, man. Just the the scissors clipping in your gums. Oh, fucking hate dentists. I don't need them, dude. I'm my teeth are nice. Not shiny, but nice. <laughs> That's that can't be legal. Can't do that. I guess you look kind of similar, so maybe I'll be fine. After saying that, Madota took the insurance card out of her wallet and handed it over. It was covered in a gaudy floral protective case like a high school girl. Like a high school girl would use. When Tomoe saw it, she was dumbfounded. Wait, more importantly. Yeah, this shit's illegal? Your police! Proof of real life police corruption. This is where our tax dollars go. True. True. What happened? What was the realization? Suddenly, Tomoe went silent and gazed at the contents of the insurance card in her hand. And then she raised her head while taking a deep breath. Then, as Madoka watched in confusion, she quickly reached the phone and turned the dial. What the heck? What's happening? I don't. Can she fill us in on what she realized? Tomoe held the receiver to her ear as she put a roadmap out of her drawer and spread it out. Then she ran her finger along it to verify a location and scribbled something on her memo pad. She tore the sheet of paper out and held it up. Right, the sketchy pills. As Tomoe hung the phone, she quickly wrote down the destination Gifu Prefectural Police Forensics Department on the First Division Schedule Board. Then she turned around, grabbed her jacket off the coat hanger, and thrust it on. It happened so fast, Madoto was stunned for a while. Ditched? Naturally, Madoka couldn't help but ask that when she saw her sister getting ready to leave without turning back. Seeming to finally notice, Tomoe looked back and said, oh, then awkwardly bowed her head. Literally, a fresh promise broken. Oh, will she make it? We'll see. Owned. This time she didn't stick around, she was moving like a tornado. There was nothing else Madoka could do, she just had to believe that her sister stood by her words when she said she hated breaking promises, and so she went back to work. What the Oh wait, we're, we're in Akasaki territory. POV. Each of us poured through the records that the head nurse, nurse handed us. Perhaps the two of them tended to get sick at the turn of the season or something, because they had irregular hospital visits and received medical consultation. However, 
通ですね。普通ですね。The fields containing the medical conditions were written in scribbled German, but we were able to grasp the contents based on the head nurse's translation. According to the record, they were afflicted with cold symptoms, a fever, and abdominal, abdominal pain. Nothing terribly unusual. <laughs> ただ、医師の判断内容と処方した薬の名前を見る限り、通常の患者さんとは特に変わりがなかったものと思います。そうですか。ちなみに、市長さんにお伺いします。こちらの薬について何か見覚えはありませんか薬うーん、こんな色の
ああいう努力の子はそれ相応の見返りがないと公平というものですからねでなきゃ私は神様に文句をつけたくなりますからな<笑>そうですね Effort, huh? I thought back to Natsumi Kimyoshi san. According to what Chief Inspector Manai heard, she had to put in considerable effort to keep up with her classmates since she moved to Kikuchi. Moving from the country to the city and enrolling in a college prep school in the middle of the semester, either of those on their own would require a great deal of effort to adapt. And on top of that, the recent trouble with Hinomizawa. Natsumi san had a lot of reasons for her deteriorated mental state. Natsumi Kimiyoshi. She must have had so much stress from keeping up with school and learning to live in an unfamiliar city after leaving her small town behind. Even adults take a considerable amount of time to adjust to major changes in their daily life. And for a girl already dealing with the stress of preparing for college entrance exams, it must have weighed particularly heavy on the, heavily on her shoulders. She didn't, take, she didn't let the endurance required to overcome all of, what sh all of that show on the surface, but it was by no means light enough to be ignored. Evening. Tomoe better made it on time. <laughs> oh my god, it is the Tokyo restaurant. Hmm? What the heck? Did someone take out the chief? Tokyo assassinated the chief? Madoka hung the receiver and let out a deep sigh. Wakamura, the housekeeper of Chief Yamokai's house, an old-fashioned woman who served them for many years. Although Madoka didn't make a good first impression with her, they eventually became friends. She was, taking Madoka, she was teaching Madoka how to cook, going shopping together, and taking care of her. She assumed Tomoe would arrive late, but she never expected Chief Yamokai to would be late too. As a result, she was forced to play host for two elderly people she had only met today, and she had nobody around for her to complain to. Nonetheless, she couldn't keep his parents waiting forever, so Madoka decided to let everyone begin eating. But as time went on, it got harder and harder. She was nervous at first about making a good first impression, but Yamokai's parents seemed to be kind, friendly people from the countryside. Oh my god. Brainstorming. What if Chief Yamokai somehow is the one who killed... Um, <laughs> Tomoe and Madoka's dad, and that's what Tomoe just figured it out, and Tomoe's interrogating Yamokai or something crazy like that. So either he got fucking shot up by Tokyo, or he's the killer. That's what I'm locking in my answer. He's dead, or arrested, or something. I don't know. <laughs> Imagine, though. In fact, Madoka suspected them to nag her about being too young, but neither of them touched the subject at all. Instead, they smiled and nodded while listening to her hobbies and interests. All of her concerns had washed away, and Madoka was feeling happy. Madoka suddenly laughed as she looked outside. 
Maybe it was just coincidence, but this was the same restaurant where she and Tomoe met to reconcile their differences and also the restaurant Tatsuno and the uh, Tokyo people had a meeting at. And where she first confessed her relationship with the Amorkai leading to a fight. Still, it didn't take long after that for the two of them to meet up, so it felt like a lucky place. Those happy days were destroyed in an instant, followed by her sister's relentless efforts to compensate for it. Truth be told, she always wanted to help Tomoe out. She wished they could cry and suffer together, only to laugh it all off in the end. Yet, Tomoe continued pushing herself and making sacrifices, without ever relying on Madoka. So, Madoka thought it would be best if she left. In doing so, she thought her sister might eventually focus on her own happiness. Tomoe climbed to the rank of the elite at the National Police Agency, Madoka finally had something resembling a family. If she had continued living with her sister, they would have both pushed themselves and put up with everything, making it impossible for the two of them to find abundant happiness. Tomoe still treated her like an idiot and felt some resentment, true, but even now Madoka could probably say she was okay with that. She'll want to have children quickly after getting married. Well, let's hope that works out. <laughs> even though Tomoe would probably complain about it. Deep down, she'll still feel happy and she would probably visit from time to time. There's allegedly an orchid at Chief Yomokai's parents' house. They will likely retire in a few years and helping them out would be an interesting experience. And as the seasons change, she could send Tomoe some freshly harvested fruit. And this feels like the death flight, man. I don't want him to die, though. Maybe I'm just wrong. <laughs> she could tease her older sister, saying, Please find someone as nice as soon as possible, all while looking forward to her sister's success. That was the happy future Madoka envisioned. And when they finally... And when that was finally within arm's reach, they could find the time to relax. Just then, she heard rough footsteps coming from the entrance of the restaurant. Someone was there, and she needed to see who it was. As Madoka turned around, the man she was waiting for came around the corner of the hallway and appeared right in front of her. What the? He's fine? He's not dead? Uh... Something happened to Tomoe, maybe? Uh-oh. What the heck? So much things are happening? Am, am I right about him being the killer of the father? Oh, san shouted only that, completely speechless. However, he was still able to move, and on the other hand, was so surprised that I didn't just lose my voice. I even forgot how to breathe. <laughs> oh, wait, no, this is probably the Aoi nose. And then, Detective Fujita's face turned pale and his eyes were completely red as he told us one thing oh never mind bro it's the chief it's actually the chief wait no maybe it's not the chief maybe the chief's bringing madoka to the hospital what the? Heck? I don't know what's happening, man. Wish you'd explain your thoughts, but that's the point of the mystery. <laughs> oh, cliffhanger me, baby. They know how to put you on the edge of your seat. What happened? 
I'm still locking in my answer that Chief Yamoka is the killer somehow. That would be crazy. And maybe Tomoe contacted Nat to me too? I don't know, Shit, shit's going crazy. Anyways, guys, nice. thanks for watching, I know. That's a killer cliffhanger, but it is what it is. And I'll see you next time with some more Kagaboshi. Until then, see ya!